Hello, this is Greg Wagner, and this will be um, CIS 250 um, lecture on structures and macros. So this will be covering um, one of the later modules, and um, I think it's an interesting topic. Um, structures are very similar to arrays, but the way they store data. So I'll show you here later. I'll explain to what you what structures are, and then go over what they are, how they are stored in memory, and this I'm um, using assembly, as well as going over macros. Essentially, macros are procedures that or just you, you copy and paste the code into the uh, into your function. So they're very similar to the macros you would see in like C or C++. And it will be a pretty sh brief um, lecture for today's class, but I do want, I'll do some demos of code um, throughout it. And so essentially a structure is basically a data structure that holds multiple fields of multiple types, and then it stores those all together in, um, in the memory, in the RAM. So for example, we're going to be using this um, type student or TYP student structure throughout this lecture. So this structure, this is the basic syntax where you have the structure um, type or the structure name and then the struct um, uh, keyword. And then you'll put the, between that and where the end structure, you'll have the different types. And, or the different, uh, you'll have the different types. So in this case, we have one type called ID num which is um, as a byte, and it's basically seven bytes, and for um, a, a place in zeros. So this would basically take seven bytes of memory, because there's seven times one byte. The last name is going to be a string of 20 bytes. The credits is going to be a DW, so this is just another way to put word. So this is going to be a word of zero bytes, uh, with an initial value of zero and the status D1 of one byte. So this is going to be whether someone's a freshman, sophomore, or other student, stuff like that. So in total, you're going to allocate 7 plus 20 plus 2 for the word plus 1. So you're going to allocate 18 bytes of storage for each one for this structure. And these will be all grouped together in one spot. Now structures are very similar to classes from like the other programming, like the more modern programming languages, except structures, the only difference is structures do not have methods attached to them. They just have the fields. And then so if I wanted to define a structure, I, I define this in my data class and then I will, um, then I can basically define the variable. And so I'll have record one. And so with these angle brackets or arrows, you'll have an empty structure. So I'll use the default values defined on the previous slide of all zeros. This other one, but in order, it'll put the, the student ID number of 002344, but it'll leave blank for the last name, number of credits, and then their, their status. And this one has all four. So if you don't fill in the spaces, it'll just fill them in as, as different values. And you use the angle brackets to initialize the values when you define the statements for structures. And so if you want to, you can also use the uh, duplicate out, uh, operator to make an array of structures. So if I want to do all students, so say I'm going to do all students in this class, there's 20 of us, well, or maybe 50. We have types, we'll have all students, and we have the type here. So we have the name, type, like you normally would, and then how many you're going to have, and then you duplicate it with just empty structures. And then what you can do is, like with um, um, structures in, or with classes in C or C++ or Java, you can use the dot value, and it'll tell you basically the assembler will know how much how many bit, how much you want to take out of each step of the value. So in this case, I can move the value ten into the first record of credits, and I can move the status from zero to one. What you can also do is if you want to do um, change the um, basically get the value of the uh, uh, make a Basically, an array value of of a structure, you can um, actually access the values the same way with doing these SI values, where you put the actual value into the SI. So, for the actual implementation of the data structure, notice here I'm going to have in the stack I'm going to have these um, I'm going to have these defined values here above the data, and then within the data I'll actually to find the structure of the student. So I have your struct, your um, where you allocate the data, and then 
struct it to primary focus. You can think of this as a global variable. Your local variables for this function here, and then your main function where you actually call all the values. So I wanted to just kind of show in the memory in Visual Studio how structures work. So I'm going to generate a new struct. I'll call it just the my student one. And then make sure to do my student and s. So we basically have three values in here. We're going to have um, id, which is going to be a byte. I'll we'll make it a length 7. And so we'll do dupe. Autofill it was with zeros. And we'll have um, last name. Which will also be an array of, of bytes, so a string. I'll make this 20. We'll have um, credits, which is going to be a word. We'll initialize this with zero. And then finally, um, what do we call it? So class or I think status. This will be basically be another byte. And we'll set it at zero. So I have this value here, and then in the actual data, I'll make an I'll this is where I instantiate the value. So I'll do um, called student one, and this will we'll use the same name as we have up here. So it'll be my student, and then I'm not going to initialize this. I'll have the angle brackets, and then I'll do another one, my student. Um, I can't believe I still remember this, but this was my high school um, ID. It's pretty easy to remember, that's why I remember it. And then finally, student 3. And then I'll make up one because I can't remember any other one. So I'll do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. My last name, Wagner. Um, we'll do my credits at. 100 and we'll do my status as one. So this will be a complete value. And so what I want to do now is I'll um, move into the space into um, EAX the address of my students. So this will I weigh, I'll just basically like 28 bits. And we can see basically the whole value. So I'll put a breakpoint here and then build the solution. And then I'll run it. So I can see in the registers again. This is the value. So I, I set it here, or right here. This is the value of student one. So I'll copy, paste this here. And then you can start seeing portions of the structure. And so we have 28 bits, and so since this is um, little Indian, the 28 bits, we should have 28 bytes between here and here, so let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can actually see 24, 25, and so 25 bytes for this structure. And then my next structure is we have my bytes here, so this is going to be the structure for the second one. Um, for the next one, and then you have the total structure of the third one in this spot here. So we have structure one, structure two, and finally structure 
um, three. So this will be the total um, the total values for the this way that the, the, the data is stored in memory. So say if we want to actually change one of the values, what we could do is I can do move into um, EAX the number 10 or the number 1005 and I can then I can also move remember we can't move from memory to memory but we can move from registers to memory then I can do student one dot credits so I call it dot credit and then do EAX so I'll run this again there was a build error see what see my errors well this must be the same size so I made a mistake this should be AX because it's a, it's a word not EAX which is a double word so if I build this again It should get success. And then if I look at the registers, I move in here. I have 69 in there, so that's 105. And then you can see here when I move into credit, this value got changed from to 69 um, these two bytes here remember this or these two bytes here because this, this is a little Indian and then finally if you wanted to we can make an array so I'll call this CIS 250 so this will be our, our class of my student and then Do my student, or 20 students in the class, and then have empty registers. And this way we can basically um, get the whole class um, stored into the structure. I'm going to back up real quick. I messed up here. I need to do duplicate for this to work. So the next topic I want to go to after structures is something that's a little bit different, but it's kind of goes with memory allocation, and that's macros. So essentially, macros are a basically what they do is they cut and, whatever you define as a macro and then call it within your assembly code. It will essentially cut and paste that macro and put it into your code. And so, like at the third bullet here says, each time a macro is invoked, quote unquote invoked, a copy of the macro is inserted into the program. Now this is different than procedures. So what procedures do is when you do the call procedure, your assembler is gonna your 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 program is actually gonna jump to that play that to that code. And it could be another file or something like that, whereas a macro just cuts and pastes the code. So essentially with macros you have a trade-off where your code's gonna run faster because you don't have to jump around as much. However, it's gonna have a take up more memory. So, you, so basically, if you want to use macros, if you use them a lot of times, it's going to take a lot of space. So generally, macros are going to be pretty short in code, whereas if you have a longer one, it's going to fall into a procedure. And this, this idea between macros being really short and procedures or functions being longer also goes to other programming languages like C, where you can have macros, and those are generally very brief, like one line, whereas a procedure is going to be multiple, um, multiple lines. And then a macro, um, so say I want to make a macro that just basically displays a, a, a star character in the console. So basically you define a macro with your macro name and then macro instead of proc like you would for, with a procedure. And then you can just push the values in there. And since the code is to be copied and pasted in there, you actually don't need to do the um, push and pop of the, of the registers or the return value. You just put it in there and it will go to the beginning to the, to the end. And then, um, so this example, you can also use macros with parameters. In this case, you have, a, you have a parameter called char, and you'll basically push the char 
into the DL register in this case. So you can like procedures, if you put the value after the name macro, you can use that as a procedure. And then also you can define multiple parameters. And this way you'd have like say row and column and it basically put those values in there. You follow it with the rec, which will basically say, okay, I need to, you actually need these parameters for it to run. So the next step is I want to make a macro. And so remember, all macro is just a copy and paste function. So there's a little bit less copy and paste of some values. So there's a little bit less structure than you would with like a procedure. So first of all, I'll just make this um, normally. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to make, I want to make a square, a square, basically a square number. So I'll make a, mac, a square macro. And I'm just going to take in one value, the val. And I'll also do int m. And then for in this value, or in this macro, I just want to move into the ax the value and then square it. So I'll do multi and then square. And then to call it, I want to pass in a value. So I'm going to call, I'm just going to call this value. I'm going to make it a double word since I'm passing a double word. I'm going to make the value 10. And I don't have to do call or anything, I just have to put the name. So I'll just put square and then space value. And now when I build this, and say I run it, there should be 100 in the register. And after I run it, 64 is 100. So it's just a quick example of do it using a macro. Again, a macro just copy and pastes the values in here. So when they, in the assembly, it actually has basically just these two lines. So I hope you, and the copies in this value, so I hope, so I hope you have a good Good understanding, a ba good basic understanding of um, structures, and the learning objectives were to understand what structures were and how macros work. And I hope you have a nice week.